The art of defense is a concept that runs deep in the animal kingdom, and none exemplify this more than the Ankylosaurus. This armored dinosaur was a master of defense, covered in head to toe in body armor and a tail ending in a wrecking ball. This spectacular creature has garnered quite the reputation as a living tank, a reputation that has made Ankylosaurus one of the most famous dinosaurs of all time. A reputation that wasn't lost on the Jurassic Park franchise, with the infamous Ankylosaurus doing what it does best and displaying its own impressive defenses on the big screen. So today, we'll be breaking down the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World Ankylosaurs, and how exactly the InGen scientists recreated this titanic tank. So without further ado, let's dive in. Following the failure of Jurassic Park in the early 90s, a storm would strike Isla Sorna, InGen's island testing facility, forcing the island's staff to evacuate after releasing the dinosaurs that weren't shipped to Jurassic Park into the wild. Unexpectedly, the remaining dinosaurs thrived in the wild, creating a whole new ecosystem straight out of the Mesozoic. InGen, on the other hand, wasn't doing so well with the Jurassic Park incident driving them to the point of near bankruptcy. So, InGen decided to take matters into their own hands once they realized the assets available on Sorna. Because more corporate greed is exactly what we needed. Which promptly resulted in a Tyrannosaurus to get free and terrorize San Diego. As a result of the Tyrannosaurus' rampage, countermeasures were taken to prevent this sort of incident from ever happening again, leading to the Gene Guard Act a bill that would ensure that the dinosaurs cloned by InGen would be given the rights of other endangered species, while making the further cloning of dinosaurs illegal. But this didn't last long as InGen was bought out by Masrani Global two years later, who were interested in their own dinosaur cloning projects. And after pulling a few legal strings, InGen scientists were back at it again cloning new dinosaurs in the late 90s wasting little time creating new creatures like Spinosaurus and Ceratosaurus, while completing unfinished assets from Jurassic Park like Corythosaurus and Ankylosaurus. However, for unknown reasons, these animals would be released into the wilds of Sorna, where they would live for some time before they would eventually be transported to Isla de Nublar, the site of which would eventually become Jurassic World, with a new batch of Ankylosaurus being cloned as attractions for the park. Jurassic World was a massive hit, drawing people from all over the world to experience the incredible animals brought back from extinction, with Ankylosaurus becoming one of the many dinosaurs within Jurassic World's collection of creatures, its iconic tank-like exterior being a staple amongst the vast variety of animals in the park. However, Paradise would come to an end with the inception of the Indominus Rex, leading to its appearance in Jurassic World where a herd would encounter the escaped hybrid during its rampage. One of the Ankylosaurus engaged the Indominus in a short scuffle, resulting in the Ankylosaurus landing a direct hit to the hybrid's face, before being dispatched by the Indominus who crushed the Ankylosaurus in her jaws. Following the brief yet brutal rampage of the Indominus Rex, the animals on the island would be abandoned as the park shut down, allowing them to roam free once more, with the Ankylosaurus among them. The Ankylosaurus would prove to be fairly successful in the wilds of Isla Nublar, being some of the most numerous herbivores left on the island until an extinction level event would come in the form of Mount Saibo. Fortunately for the Ankylosaurus and several other species, they would be quote unquote rescued by a band of mercenaries and shepherded off of Isla Nublar as the volcano decimated the island, along with any remaining dinosaurs left on its shores. Once on the mainland, the remaining dinosaurs were transferred to Lockwood Estate to be sold off to some rich assholes, with at least one Ankylosaurus being amongst the many dinosaurs sold. The rest would meet a more fortunate fate, being set free into the wilds of California by the Dinosaur Protection Group, back into nature's hands once more. So what exactly were the InGen Ankylosaurus exactly? First, we need to understand what Ankylosaurus is, and for that, we'll need to reference real-life Ankylosaurus to get a solid idea, while also looking towards Jurassic Park's own fossil record, which is fairly different from ours. Ankylosaurus was a large armored dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period, 
and one of the last dinosaurs to live in western North America. This armored herbivore was the last and largest of its group, Ankylosauria. However, the rarity of Ankylosaurus, along with the specimens on hand being fragmentary, we've often had to look to other genera of Ankylosaurus to help generate a picture of what this animal's lifestyle, biology, and generally how it looked in life. In fact, despite Ankylosaurus being the most famous of its relatives, it's been noted that it was also the most unusual in its respective family. Which brings us to the Injun Ankylosaurus, where we can apply the same according to what we know of real Ankylosaurs. Starting off, there were two breeds of Ankylosaurus cloned by Injun, which we'll refer to as the Jurassic World clones, since they were both intended for that park. Both breeds were fairly similar if not identical to each other and their ancestors as seen in Jurassic World Dominion's Cretaceous segment which is ironic since none of them were accurate to the real animal, even in the Cretaceous. But based on the skull shape, we can infer that this species is Ankylosaurus magniventris. Ankylosaurus's skull was fairly unique amongst its relatives, and the engine clones share many of these characteristics, such as the nostrils being elliptical, along with the enlarged olfactory which provide Ankylosaurus with an amazing sense of smell. In addition, Ankylosaurus had actually four facing eyes, giving them overlapping fields of vision and allowing them to see the world in three dimensions, like we do. Which is fairly unusual since herbivores typically have eyes facing to the sides to have a wider field of vision. Overall though, the skull shape is distinctly Ankylosaurus. The body shape, however, is a different story. The first point of interest is the characteristic armor plating. The armor is a collection of bony deposits called scutes. These scutes cover the ankylosaur's backs, creating a set of thickened, impenetrable armor, similar to crocodilians, tortoises, and of course, other ankylosaurians. The armor of the Jurassic World ankylosaurs is extremely dynamic in its structure. While the skull allows us to identify the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus as Ankylosaurus magniventris, the design of the armor is much closer to those of Notosaurids, another family of armored dinosaurs on the Ankylosaur family tree. This armor reconstruction is based on old ideas of Ankylosaur armor. Due to the fact that Ankylosaurs are fairly rare back in the day, and even now actually, we've had to look to other Ankylosaurians for reference. In this case, the Ankylosaur armor appears to be based on reconstructions from the 20th century that referenced Edmontonia, a notosaur from Alberta, Canada with large shoulder spikes. With the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus sharing several similarities with reconstructions of the time, as well as sharing several traits found in notosaurs found today, such as enlarged spikes on its flanks and the organization of the scoots. That said, we do have ankylosaurids that also bear similar structures to these reconstructions, such as Zool, which bears an eerie resemblance to the ankylosaurs in these films. The armor of ankylosaurs are particularly similar to crocodilians, in that the armor was woven into the skin with sinews, like chainmail or a bulletproof vest, and just as effective, if not more so. The engine and Kylosaurus armor appear to be a set of segmented plates sitting atop the body, providing a protective shell or exoskeleton. What's more, unlike other Ankylosaurs, the Jurassic World Ankylosaurs armor is embedded directly into the back, rather than in the skin. Ankylosaurs armored scoots are a mix of smooth, keeled armor plating, composed of bone-like protrusions called osteoderms. If that wasn't enough, the armor plating was composed of several layers of osteoderms, creating an incredibly strong defense. Each one of these bony pieces of Ankylosaur's armor are interlinked by fibrous tissue, with the scutes being composed of bony protrusions that create a practically impenetrable defense, thanks to the armor being strengthened by cushions of collagen fibers. These fibers in combination with the armor plating helps absorb the impact of an attack making the animal's hide incredibly tough to penetrate, with the armor shielding the ankylosaurs from the claws, jaws, and teeth of the most terrifying predators to ever walk the earth. A living tank in every sense of the phrase. 
However, the armor is not only built to be incredibly strong, but also incredibly lightweight. This is thanks to the armor being honeycombed, with the armor being filled with air pockets, allowing the animal to carry the armor on their backs without being weighed down, while also allowing the ankylosaurs to move with greater mobility, with the Jurassic World ankylosaurs taking this adaptation one step further. The armored shell of the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus appears to be quite flexible, allowing the animal a great range of movement, with the segments shifting and switching according to the Ankylosaurus position. Modern armadillos have similar flexibility in their armor, having several bands and segments that allow them a greater range of movement, despite being covered in an armored exoskeleton. While this may seem odd at first glance, the segments are actually present in their ancestors as well as real ankylosaurs, based on several well-preserved remains of other ankylosaurs like Scolosaurus. These segments are used to allow the animals to maintain a free range of movement despite the heavy armor plating. In addition, real ankylosaurs don't have this shell-like structure and instead have the armor directly embedded into the skin, while being spaced in between allowing the animals to not only be heavily protected, but unrestricted by the armor in said movement. The Jurassic World clones take full advantage of this light weight by not only being able to move flexibly and quickly, but the combination of the lightweight armor and more upright posture allows them to actually gallop, something ankylosaurs really can't do due to having a generally squat gait. But how can an armored creature accomplish such a feat? Once again, we look to the armadillo as a reference. Cause really, it seems like the Jurassic World ankylosaurs have more in common with armadillos than actual ankylosaurs. Specifically, the nine-banded armadillo. These animals have a shell-like carapace on their backs. But, despite the armor cover, said armor is lightweight and flexible. Allowing the armadillo to not only make rapid movements, but even run! However, this isn't without its disadvantages. While the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus can gallop thanks to their longer legs and upright posture, it also makes them easier to flip when under attack. This is why real-life Ankylosaurus evolved a more squat gait, not only to help support their weight, but the more splayed posture made it easier to hug the ground when under attack, protecting its underside while the rest of the body was shielded by the armor. The armor itself even has its own weaknesses as seen when the Indominus crushes the Ankylosaurus' skull in her jaws. Which, funnily enough, we actually have seen a similar interaction in the fossil record, with the Tarbosaurus having bitten through the skull of an Ankylosaur with its own set of powerful jaws. However, if the armor wasn't enough to repel attackers, the Ankylosaurus had one more weapon in its arsenal. I am of course referring to the iconic club tail. The club tails of ankylosaurs are by far their most formidable weapons for defense. When under threat, these animals would swing their clubs with astounding force, slamming into opponents like organic wrecking balls, in order to repel some of the most terrifying creatures to ever walk this planet. But what made up these astonishing club tails and how did they work? The club tails of ankylosaurs are composed of a fused collection of armor, bone, and tissue, forming a large, bulbous club. The club is separated into four knobs, an adaptation to help absorb the stress of the club's impact, while increasing the force of the blow based on the shape and size of the ankylosaurs club. Combining with the specialized muscles running from the club all the way to the hips, Ankylosaurus could generate an impact force of 15,000 newtons. That's over 66,000 pounds of force. Such an impact could pulverize the bones of even the largest and strongest of dinosaurs. However, the engine Ankylosaurus lack a crucial piece of the puzzle that make their clubs much less efficient, a handle. The handle of an ankylosaurus's club is a rod of fused vertebrae at the end of the tail, directly connected to the club, allowing the ankylosaurus easier control of their swing, while connecting the tail club to special muscle attachments to the hips, allowing the animals to hit harder and faster. Unfortunately, this seems to be relatively underdeveloped in the InGen clones, if not absent, indicated by the effectiveness and style of the swing. 
It's even more evident in the droopiness of the tails, as the handles are what allow the tails to be held level above the ground, while the in-gen clones have very droopy tails as a result. This is likely due to the cloning process, due to the alterations in the genome causing certain traits to develop and perform improperly, causing the development of null alleles and certain genes to be not expressed. This is detrimental in the case of Ankylosaurus because, as a result of a lack of a handle, means the clones have a harder time controlling the force of their swings, and as a result, have much harder times dealing lethal blows. However, it does seem the clones have found a way around this weakness, albeit at the cost of more energy. Instead of relying on a handle, the Jurassic World Ankylosaurus instead used their clubs as a flail, throwing their hips and body weight into each swing, generating enough force to deliver a devastating blow, transforming a club into what is essentially a medieval mace. This creates an incredibly destructive yet hard to control weapon, with a powerful swing that is still more than able to demolish any aggressors. The result? A heavily armed and heavily armored herbivore with little weaknesses. However, there was more to Ankylosaurus' life than offense and defense. The engine Ankylosaurus also possessed several interesting behaviors and traits seen in both their ancestors and the real animals. After all, if a tank is gonna run, it's gonna need fuel. Ankylosaurs are heavy eaters to say the least, with the Jurassic World clones having a wide-ranging diet of plants including ferns, grass, shrubs, and fruits, and a lot of it likely needing to consume at least 130 pounds of plant material per day. However, digesting plant material isn't easy, but fortunately for our armored friends, they had just the right tools to do it. Ankylosaurus used what is known as fermentation when digesting food, a process that uses bacteria to break down the cellulose of plants in the stomach, making it easier for the animals to digest. Herbivorous reptiles and mammals use fermentation when digesting plant material today, from lizards to cows. And it's likely that ankylosaurs use the same adaptation, both the real animals and the ones from the Jurassic World films. Eating wasn't the only thing the Jurassic World ankylosaurs were good at. They were also quite the social butterflies. The in-gen ankylosaurs are incredibly social, often herding with each other or even herding with other large herbivores. This socialization isn't limited to safety in numbers either, but the Jurassic World and Kylosaurs do form bonds of companionship, be it with others of their own species or other creatures like humans, such as the case with Bumpy and Ben from Camp Cretaceous. While we don't know to what extent Ankylosaurus was social itself, it should be noted that the animals were likely social to some extent, based on several bone beds of other Ankylosaurian dinosaurs like Pinacosaurus and Gastonia, with a study in 2020 noting that Ankylosaurus lived in age-segregated groups, with individuals herding with others of similar age. Needless to say, Jurassic World's Ankylosaurs are much better parents than their real life counterparts, and fiercely protective of their offspring and fellow herd members. However, this sociality and tolerance of others has its limits. While the Jurassic World Ankylosaurs are fairly mild-mannered, they will get aggressive when they feel threatened or territorial, the latter of which causing them to trade blows with other well-armed herbivores, in particular, Triceratops. According to the evolution of Claire novel, when the new batch of Ankylosaurus were cloned for Jurassic World, the Triceratops would constantly harass the young Ankylosaurs ultimately causing the staff to be more careful when introducing Ankylosaurus to larger herds before ultimately keeping the two separated in the park. This is likely why we don't see any Triceratops in Camp Cretaceous, as for the most part, the two species were located on different areas of the island, with the exception of the Jurassic World film of course, and it likely seemed to stay that way until Mount Saibo forced them together as conditions began to take a turn for the worse. This is ironic considering that real life Triceratops and Ankylosaurus actually did live in different regions, with Triceratops preferring coastal lowlands, while Ankylosaurus preferred the forested highlands. Their ecology on Isla Nublar is just as interesting. Based on their numbers in Camp Cretaceous and Fallen Kingdom, 
It seems that Ankylosaurus was doing fairly well in Isla Nublar after Jurassic World was abandoned. Occupying the role of little browsers and grazers, the Ankylosaurus were able to do extremely well on the island, with their less than picky diets being an advantage over other herbivores, while being able to ferment the various plants on the island as they grazed in the valleys and forests of Isla Nublar, and likely the same case on their short-lived stay on Isla Sorna. And, thanks to their bulletproof armor and wrecking ball tails, were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the island's most ferocious predators with the added protection of a herd making them nearly invincible. To put it simply, one Ankylosaurus is nearly invincible. A whole herd of Ankylosaurus is virtually indestructible. As a result, Ankylosaurus was not only one of the most well-defended herbivores in the ecosystem, but one of the most successful dinosaurs on Isla Nublar. After all, being a living tank comes with a territory. And for such a well-armored and adaptable creature, it certainly had its benefits. And that wraps up our dive into the InGen Ankylosaurus. I had an absolute blast researching this one because Ankylosaurus is my favorite dinosaur tied with Parasaurolophus, but that's a story for another day. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Tell me your thoughts on the InGen Ankylosaurus in the comments down below, and what other creatures from Jurassic Park or other sci-fi stuff would you like to see me cover next? That said, thanks for watching, and have a random day.